Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on Aesop's Fables. And uh, I realized I had done a little bit of work before I hit the record button, so I'm going to go over that really quick so you guys can get to the same place as me. I'm also doing a little housekeeping, as you can see. So basically what I have here is an 8x8 eight eight pocket page, 8x8 eight eight pocket page, and then I've added a large flap, and this flap is 85 by eight, and you're gonna score a half inch, you're gonna join those two. And I have this joined on um, the right-hand side. So this is where you're going to attach it, then here's your score line, and you've got this full-size flap on your eight by eight pocket page. Then I've added these two uh, eight by eight images. It's the flip side of, of this. So this is um, the 12 by 12. There's what the backside looks like. These are the two eight by eight. Now I did, I've been messing around with this, trying to make it as easy as possible in the tutorial. And I've marred my pages a little bit, but that's gonna get covered up. So I'm really not worried about it. So go ahead and um, either pause or continue to watch and then come back to this, but add these. This is Fussy Cut from the 12 by 12 collection. I've added it and it is on top of foam tape. And I chose foam tape because I wanted this to close as flat as possible. Okay, so that's where we are. Now, one of the things that I realized um, is I forgot to put some kind of a magnet in here. So at some point I'll add a magnet here and I'm really not sure what I'm gonna do on this side, but it's likely that I'll be able to cover it up with some sort of an embellishment. But for now, no magnets. If you're going to add your magnets ahead of time, um, it's, it's a little more challenging to do because we're going to add this pop-up feature down here. And so where to place the second magnet, that's part of the reason why I haven't done it yet. So don't worry, I'm gonna figure out how to close it and keep it closed in the album. But right now I don't have any magnet placement. So again, this is the two eight by eight um, collection pack. This is Fussy Cut from the 12 by 12. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, after you're finished with that, is we're going to be, um, create uh, what is going to become the substrate for the pop-up. And then we're going to use the 12 by 12 collection pack and we're gonna fussy cut along um, some of these and this part is basically going to go away and that way behind here is what you're gonna see that where you're gonna see the eight by eights that are on the page that we just completed. So you're gonna take your full um, 12 by 12 and we're gonna do some fussy cutting. But before that, we are going to um, put these two substrates together. Now the way this is gonna work, and I did a lot of research and um, there's a channel that I found that's really focused just on pop-ups and the way the mechanisms work and not necessarily how you're putting design paper on them. Um, and this guy is really good. So I'm gonna definitely put that link in the description. I learned a lot from that, but I do have to say, even watching his tutorials, I found that I was prototyping and redoing things. Um, so it does take some time to learn it, which is one of the reasons why I did it a few times is so that you wouldn't have to go through that process. So with any luck, you guys will be able to catch on uh, quickly. So you're gonna start with two of these and this is eight, it's eight and a half inches wide. And then we're gonna cut part of the top off. In this case, it's eight and a half inches tall, but it doesn't have to be. So it needs to be at least eight inches tall. So it is, basically you need to start with an eight and a half by eight and a half. And right now, I think that's what I have. Um, you're gonna score, and these are gonna be mirror images of each other. So in this case, we scored a half inch, one and a half, and I wrote this down and I forgot where I put it, one and a half, and then I think seven and eight. So let me double check that. Mm. No. So, half inch, one and a half, seven and a half, and then eight. Okay, so half inch, one and a half, seven and a half, and then eight. So then on this side, it's exactly the same. You're just gonna rotate it or it's a half inch, one, and then I think it's seven and eight. So the way I actually had done it is I had done both of them this way and then just turned one around. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. There's a banner running across the bottom if it doesn't. And I'm going to give you the score lines 
based on um, just doing it one direction and then flipping it one around for the installation. So I'm not going to give you two sets of score lines. Um, and, and it's different um, depending on which way it's in the, you put it inside the book because they're not symmetric, right? Okay, so this is the side that has a half inch and the one inch score line. We're going to put tape on both of those. And that's going to make sense. So basically, one of the things I learned is that all pop-ups are based on um, creating uh, a 90 degree angle inside your book. So I wanted this pop-up to span two pages. So I was kind of struggling with, well, how do I you know, get a 90 degree on this side and this side to get it to pop up? And this is how I, what I figured out. And you'll, it'll be very obvious in just a moment. Now on, I've rotated it around and I'm adding tape on the other half inch, what I call a gusset, flange gusset. Oh, my tape went over, sorry. I'm just gonna turn that off. Is it sticking up? Yeah, it is. I missed my line. I feel jittery this morning because I had too much coffee. I don't know about you guys, but it seems like whenever I drink coffee and it's hot, it has a bigger impact on me. <laughs> Maybe it's just in my head. Okay, we're doing the same thing. We're adding tape to basically every half inch um, score that you have. So there's two on this side and one on this side. I think you guys are gonna like it. So this is meant to be kind of like, you know, kids pop-up books. Some of the features are going to be like that. But I've also left um, room in the album to add pictures to that as well. And you will see that'll make more sense in just a few minutes. Let's set this aside. Now, the next thing we want to do is join these two pieces of paper. So what we want is to take that the widest gusset that we have right here and make them uh, oppose each other. We want the two half inch score lines facing each other. The bottom score line on both cases is what's going to attach it to the book. And that bottom score line is going to get put on either side of that seam. So that's gonna be the bottom. This is going to be, and actually it turns out you really only need to put tape on one side for this because we're gonna join those. On the first one, you need tape on both sides. Now we're just going to join these two pieces. We want to try to keep them lined as perfectly as, as we can so that we've got a straight edge. And it's very important to have a straight edge on one side, the bottom side. Um, if you, uh, The top side is going to get trimmed away, so I'm less concerned about that. So I need to find... I don't know what, I've had just the worst time remembering to put my pick tool back in its original location. Okay, so I've got I've got tape on both sides, so I'm going to remove one side, and then I'm going to do sort of that zipper technique where I take a tab, fold it out, and then that's going to give me some time to pivot these two um, until I've got what I think is a very straight edge, so that it, the whole thing's not grabbing at once, and it's going to be a little easier said than done because it's hard to see. So this this score line, which is the one closest to the center of the page, the second score line, is going to get lined up with this tape on, there we go, and now I'm going to pivot it a little bit just to make sure I'm going in straight, and then I'm also going to use my straight edge on the bottom to see that I'm not drifting up or down. And it looks like, it looks pretty straight. And I want to stay out of, sorry, I want to stay off that score line. It's close to, but not covering the score line. Okay. And it's already wanting to stick because it's sticking to the back side of the, the, the mask from the tape. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like from the top. So now you have, have this gusset. So this is where we're, that 90 degree angle is gonna come from. Instead of having this attached directly to the page, um, we've got this little lift here, and that's what's gonna create the, the um, 
dimension in on this page that we're looking for. And so the idea behind this design was that when you opened the book, you would have the benefit of the pop-up even when both pages were laying flat. Whereas a lot of other pop-ups, you really only get the benefit of the pop-up if it's in this L or 90 degree angle. This way we're still gonna have it. Okay, so that was a big step, we're done. The next thing we're gonna do, and it's a little tedious, is we're gonna apply this to this seam. So we want each one, pick the side that's straightest, and if, if neither one is straight, put it, lay it in your trimmer, cut one of the edges so that it's straight. And it doesn't have to be both, just one of them, because we are going to cut a whole bunch of stuff here. Ooh, I said we were gonna attach it to the page, but we're not ready yet. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our designer paper. And we're going to attach it to this, then we're gonna fussy cut around it, and that way when we put our pop-up in, it's double thick. We've got the black cardstock plus this image laying on top, and then we're gonna fussy cut around the images that we want. So let's set this aside again. I almost did it out of order. So you just need to turn this to one side or the other so that it's laying as flat as possible. And then we're going to apply our 12 by 12 picture, uh, image, just like so. So if you're uncomfortable with all this hanging off the edge, you can cut that away now, or you can just glue it to your black cardstock and then fussy cut around it when, when you're done. I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and add it to the page. Now the way I designed this, the spread from here to here is 12 inches. So what I am gonna do is I'm gonna put this in the trimmer and I'm gonna take uh, an eighth of an inch off. So I've got a nice even border around, um, around the overall image. And I'm taking it off on um, the side that has the bricks. I'll do that real quick. So I just took an eighth of an inch off here. So we are going to glue it down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, ink to the edge. second. So in the end, we're going to have a score line that runs right down the center, like so. I'm going to think about something for just a second. Um, and what I'm thinking about is whether or not I want to put a magnet behind this right now. And I think I might put a magnet here. Probably... figure something out. Okay. What I am going to do is I'm going to trim this down to eight inches. Right now it is eight and a half inches. Now, now I know this is the right height for the book. Got a little bit of a rough edge there. Okay. So if this closes, then I would need a magnet over here somewhere. So I think I am gonna do that. So I'm gonna place a magnet over here. So here's the current plan. When I fussy cut, my plan, let me use this, it's a little bit easier to see, is to fussy cut around this, come down, go around the car, around the mice, then I'm going to cut off a whole bunch of this and then fussy cut the blue flower and the yellow flower and the red flower. 
This, which will be trimmed off, is going to get applied to the back side, so we'll create that dimension. And as you know, the, the uh, balloon is already there. So I, I'm going to place a magnet here. Let me tell you where it is. I think I'm coming down an inch and over an inch. Yeah, just an inch from the corner. And let's go ahead and do that. And this is a part where you definitely want to watch ahead because I may make some adjustments after after we fussy cut. Um, I'm not sure. So there's two things we could do. We could fussy cut this now or we can glue it to this and fussy cut. I'm going to glue it down and fussy cut because otherwise once you fussy cut this and you apply it, you still got to fussy cut your black cardstock. So I'm going to go ahead and add it now. And again, you want this to, to be as flat as possible. I'm going to use my tool to burnish that down a little bit. And I think the technique I'm going to use is to try to go from the center to the edges. Because I think if we get the center in straight, that'll help with the rest of the flow. Okay. All right. So it's bothering me that I can't see the top. So I'm going to cut part of this off, just rough cut because I want to see the eight inch mark there. So I know I want to preserve these to be in a layer, so I'm just going to cut around that. You are going to use the words. Um, we are going to separately mount the words. And I think we might use the coins, so I'm just going to be careful to cut around that so that it can be repurposed. Okay. So we'll set that aside. Now I can have a better idea of where these things are landing. I can see the whole thing. Okay. Yep, yeah, I think we're good. Go ahead and glue this down. I'll, I'll trim that off at the very... Well, I should trim it now. So this should be... Uh, seven and seven eighths. So I'm going to mark that at seven and seven eighths. Maybe I need a ruler. Here we go. And this is the only side that's going to come all the way to the top. Seven and seven eighths. And I just need to make a straight line. Okay, now I'm just going to ink that. I could feel it spin a little. It's not as straight as I, it could have been, but I think it'll be fine. Okay. Now I'm only inking the top because that's the only part that won't be fussy cut. I'm going to cut down right where that the metal fence is. Okay, and you can see the magnet's going to be covered now. Now we're ready to add our glue. And it's a large surface, so I would say be generous with your glue so it doesn't dry too fast on you while we're trying to get this positioned. Nala says, good morning, everyone. Okay, let's get this back off. Tape off. And get a little glue on that. Oops. Okay, now I'm going to burnish everything into place. OK. 
Okay. Now we're going to score right here in the middle. Gently, you don't want to tear your paper, and this is going to fold like so. And that's going to be our closed position. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do our fussy cutting, and then the last thing we're going to do is attach it to the book itself. Okay, so let's get out our fussy cut scissors. I am going to cut around this rose down to the yellow rose, then cut around uh, the blue flower, and then I'm going to have all this grass to put in the background and then I'm going to cut around the mice around the vehicle and then right here at the fence line so that's the plan I'm going to get started and then I am going to break away and then I'm going to show you guys the piece that I cut off okay now if you if you have difficulty fussy cutting because it's just hard to manage your scissors you might want to fussy cut this before you glue it down and then cut the cardstock because then it's not as thick but I just didn't want to do it twice. So that's you know, completely up to you guys. I'm gonna to try to keep this all in one piece so that when I'm done, you can see exactly where I cut. And then at this point, I'm gonna break away. And then when I come back, I'm gonna show you the piece that I cut off the top. And this is pure preference. So you can change the look of yours um, by deciding to cut more or less off, okay? All right, so I'm gonna stop here. You can see that I've just coming around on the edge of this rose. And now I'm gonna cut down to the yellow rose and then cut around it, okay? So there's the beginning of the fussy cut. Okay, when I get back, I should be able to separate these two pieces and you'll have a good idea of what I did. Okay, real quick, so I'm halfway done. So you can see this is the part that's coming off. There's the part that's going to be the pop-up. And when you get to the center line here, you just need to cut straight across. So I came from the back side to cut, and then what I'll do is continue to cut around the mouse and it'll work out just fine. Um, but just FYI, you are gonna bump into that, so you'll need to flip it over and trim that piece. Okay, everyone, I went ahead and finished fussy cutting, so I'm gonna pull that apart so you can see you know, where I've trimmed everything. So I went around the flowers, and the idea is we're going to use this behind it, and so that's gonna give us some more dimension. And then I cut around the mice, around the vehicle, and then right here to the fence line. And then when we fold these inside, that's what it's going to look like. So let's go ahead and bring in um, this paper. And so this is all going to get installed like so. So again, we are going to line these two up right there. And then um, I'll set that aside. And then once we have this in, then we'll add the two side pieces. <clears throat> Okay. <clears throat> so this uh, this score line is going right on this score line. I think I'm going to just do both at once. <clears throat> so when the book is closed, these two flanges are going to be like this. Um, on top of those pages. So I think that's how I'm going to install it. Is I've got both pieces laid back. I'm going to lay it in so that it's flush with the bottom. And make sure I put it in right side. Yep. Flush with the bottom. But make sure you give yourself enough space in the corner, you know, that it'll close. So don't lay it on top of the score line it right next to it okay so that's in and that's what it should look like okay pretty good and it doesn't have to I mean it's as close as possible but make sure that you can lay it you can uh, lay it down so that it looks like this on either side okay so the next thing is to get our wings in and the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna fold it back completely is that right I have to think about this for a second fold it back completely yeah they get folded back completely we remove the score tape <clears throat> okay, and now there's your one inch gusset, your half inch, I'm laying it flat. I'm going to close this right on top of it, just like that. Now you can see how it's standing up on its own. Now we're going to repeat that process over here. <clears throat> and you may have to watch this a couple of times. Um, I know I did. 
Um, it looks super simple. And then you go to do it and you're like, uh, uh where do I fold? <laughs> okay, there we go. And now you can see we've got this dimension that exists even when the book is laying flat. Okay, and then when you close it, there you go. Now remember, we've got a magnet in here somewhere. So I think I'll go ahead, see if I can't find it on this side. Where is it? I think it's, a, yeah, there it is. Should be, so it was further back than I thought. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, lay that in too. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna do some burnishing. Uh, to make this lay flat and then of course we'll decorate this part of the page and this will go in the book this will be in the closed position this is what you open up and see I'm gonna add some more embellishments I just don't know what yet um, part of it's gonna come off the papers that we trimmed um, what's the last thing I want to say oh I, I should have inked the edges um, before I installed it it's gonna be difficult now but I'm gonna go ahead and try to do that so you may want to consider inking before installing. So that's what I'm going to do now and then uh, when we get back together shortly we will decorate this part of the book. Good morning! I'm back and we are ready to finish uh, page five, page five of um, Aesop's Fables. So this is the uh, paper that I chose and it's from, I'm pretty sure it's from the A4, the scale looks smaller to me. It's possible it's from the patterns and solids, I'm not sure. Okay, and that's going to be our base. And then we're going to add these um, little elements just to gussy things up a little bit. And that'll be the end of uh, page five. Now, I did something, I made a mistake when I was laying this out. And this was actually supposed to be page four. And the only reason it matters is that the story... Um, the way it comes in, um, I'm going to double check and make sure which side I want, I want this side. Um, the beginning of the story, it's got, this particular story has two 12 by 12 layouts as part of the story. So there's, um, what am I talking about? There's two of these. Um, so this is um, what's going to go on page four and the other one's going to go on page five. And this um, actually goes with this layout in um, in the 12 by 12 but what I've done is I've just switched these two so I had originally planned for this to be page four somehow I got it scrambled up so all I did was change the story so it flowed right and left the, uh, the pictures the way I had laid them out so you could do it either way um, but just so you know, when you're cutting apart the 12 by 12 for each for page four and five, the stories aren't going to match with how I laid it out in the album. You're going to have to swap them. No big deal. Most people won't know unless they've seen the actual 12 by 12 before you cut it apart. And probably you guys wouldn't have noticed either. <laughs> but I want you to, to realize that you need to change the order of the story or it won't flow. Because this is part A and... Whoops, I'm having a hard time opening my page. Part B, right here. And these were actually reversed um, in on the 12 by 12. No matter, no matter. Okay, uh, these came from the A4 collection pack. And this is actually part of the um, 12 by 12. It was just, you know, over on one of the corners, so I cut it out. And I'm actually going to put that on page four. But I'm just going to artistically lay these out just to make it kind of interesting. And I'm kind of going back and forth about whether or not I want to actually make these so they're tuck spots um, or just sort of decorate the cover. And I think I'm just going to decorate the cover. And I may add some more to this later. But I didn't want it to just be a plain page. So I'm going to lay it out like this. And if you wanted, you could certainly put photos here. So I'm just going to try to glue things down with my water bottle. <laughs> there we go. And I'm going to leave these open-ended. So if you do decide to put photos here, they can slide slightly behind these elements. Yep. And 
there we go. So that is page four. Now the other thing we can do, if you think that looks a little too plain, is we can put our story in here. Um, and I think I'll leave it here for now. And then um, when we go back through the walkthrough, I'll show that we also have a tuck spot inside here. Okay, so that is the end of page five. Thanks, everybody. Be back soon with the rest of the book.